one last confidence interval video. On this one, what I want to do is I want to add a part four to each of the, or at least two of the examples that we've done so far, maybe the most recent two. I want to add a part four. What we're doing in part four is we're being told a specific margin of error and we're being asked to figure out the sample size. So this is kind of the possible part four. Maybe I'll even put that in quotes in confidence interval questions. And I can tell you that on your quiz this week and on your midterm, when you see confidence intervals, it'll have this part four in there. It'll be one, two, and three, exactly like you saw in the previous videos, and then a part four. And for most people, part four is the hardest one. That's why it gets its own video. Possible part four in confidence interval questions. And in short, what you do, maybe I should change some colors here, is you are gonna determine N for a given margin of error. What are you even talking about? That's a bunch of language that I've never even heard before. Okay, let me define some words for you. When you have a confidence interval, what you do is you start with your point estimate, your center here, and then you go up by a little bit and you go down by a little bit to create the bounds of your interval. Note that this number is as far below this number as this number is above this number. The amount above this number that this number is, or equivalently, the amount below this number that this number is, is what's called your margin of error. You can think about all a confidence interval is, is a point estimate, plus or minus some margin of error. In this case, it's 10 plus or minus 0 0.544. 10 plus 0.544, 10 minus 0.544. That's what a margin of error is. So the idea here is you go through steps one, two, and three and get your conclusion. I'm 80% certain that the population average diameter of redwoods is between 9.456 feet and 10.544 feet. I'm 80% sure of that. Suppose that you are some, I don't know, biologist? Who looks at trees? Whoever it is that looks at trees. And you want a better estimate of the diameter of these redwoods. And by better, I just mean a smaller margin of error. Right? Think about it. If you're telling somebody you're 80% sure that the diameter is between 9.5 feet and 10.5 feet, they're like, which is it? And you're like, I don't know. It's somewhere in there. Well, a better estimate would be if these two numbers were closer to 10, if we could move these in somehow. And it turns out there's two different ways you can move these in. Two different ways you can decrease the margin of error. One way is you could reduce your level of confidence. Right? If there's less area in here, I'm shading less stuff, these are closer to the middle here. If you decrease your level of confidence, you're also decreasing your margin of error. But that's not the solution that we want, right? That doesn't help. The person's upset that your margin of error is so big, you could be like, well, I'm 30% sure that it's between 9.8 and 10.2 or something. They're like, yeah, 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 that doesn't help. I want my margin of error to decrease. I don't want this distance to be smaller, but I want my confidence level to stay the same. You might think that that's impossible, but that's what we get into in part four. How can you decrease the margin of error? And the answer ends up being, well, if the spread were smaller, that would give me a smaller margin of error, right? The way this is calculated is based off this spread. If this spread were smaller, then I wouldn't have to go out as big of a number to grab 80% of the observations in the middle. And you're like, yeah, but how do you make the spread smaller, right? That three was given in the problem, right? But what if I increased N? But if N were a larger number, then the square root of n is a larger number. And if I take three and divide it by a larger number, I'm getting a smaller number. You can decrease this spread by increasing n. And so the question down here is how much would you have to increase n by? How big would n have to be for a given margin of error? Suppose you want a margin of error of only, I don't know, 0.2. Right, right now, your margin of error is 0 0.544. You want it to be smaller. You want it to be only 0 0.2. How large of a sample would you need? And maybe implied in here is if everything else stays the same, your level of confidence isn't changing, nothing else in the problem is changing, all you're changing is your sample size. And we want this margin of error. Well, it turns out that your calculator is doing calculations behind the scenes to figure this out. Your margin of error, your calculator has a formula for that. You do not need this formula at all. Maybe I should change the color or something. Your margin of error 
all it does, all your calculator does, is it add, all your margin of error is equal to is some special number of whatever your spread is. So your spread, in this case, is three divided by the square root of 50, or maybe more generally, it's sigma divided by the square root of n. And all your margin of error is, is some amount of this thing. What amount of this thing? Well, it's based on your level of confidence. If I want a 99% confidence interval, I have to go up and down by more of the spreads. If I only want an 80% confidence level, I don't have to go up and down by as many of the spreads. Z with a little alpha divided by two in the subscript, that stands for, or that's gonna end up mean, meaning some number of, some special number based upon my level of confidence, spreads. All the margin of error is, is some special number of spreads. Here's the spreads part. Here's the some special number part. And now you can't read the formula, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Well, if you were mathematically inclined, if algebra was really your thing, what you could do is you could solve this equation for n. You get the n all by itself. Multiply the square root of n over to this side, divide the margin of error over here, square both sides, so you get the n all by itself. You're like, whoa, what did you just say? Don't worry about it. Here's a formula I'm gonna always give you. If this were a problem, I would say, hint, n equals, and then in parentheses, I would write a capital Z with a little alpha divided by two in the subscript, and then margin of error down on the bottom of this fraction, and then that whole thing gets multiplied by sigma, and then this entire thing gets squared. I would give you this as a formula. All this is, is a formula that comes from this. And this would make more sense if you had to calculate your confidence intervals by hand. But since you do this all on the calculator, this doesn't really have any meaning to you. So there's no point in me having you go from this to this. I'm just going to always in this class start you out with this formula. So on your quiz this week, there will be a part four. And it'll ask you something just like this. And it'll give you this information. And what you have to do is fill in the numbers to solve for n. And that might seem really, really hard because there's so many strange looking symbols here, but it's not as bad as you'd think. There's only three numbers here. Margin of error is one of those numbers, and that's always going to be given to you in the problem. But the margin of error is this, it's given to you in the problem. Suppose you want a margin of error of only 0 0.2. There's my margin of error, it's 0 0.2. What about sigma? That was also given to you in the problem. I right, might have to go further up to find it. I bet we could find it. See, we're gonna have to go all the way up to the, okay, this arrow is a bad idea. Previous page, and here's sigma. Sigma was equal to three in this problem. So maybe go way up there and you'll find that this is just equal to three. So that's a number and that's a number. If you could just figure out the number that went here, you'd be done with the problem, it'd be super easy. Unfortunately, figuring out that number is a little bit of work but I'll do a couple of examples and then you'll have these examples that you can follow. This is where we're going to find Z with a little alpha divided by two in the subscript. To tell you how to find this, I need to first tell you what alpha is. This is a definition somewhere. Alpha, it's a Greek letter. It kind of looks like a fish. Let me try to make it better. It's a lowercase alpha is always equal to one minus your level of confidence. Always, 100% of the time. So in this problem, when it tells me that my level of confidence is 80% or 0 0.8, I know that alpha is 0 0.2, right? If 80% confidence, alpha is 20%. If it was 99% confidence, let's see if we can find one. Or let's just go, here we go, 99% confidence, perfect. Then alpha is 1%. Or 0 0.01. If it was 95% confidence, alpha would be 5%, 0 0.05. In these problems, they'll always tell you the level of confidence. You can always get alpha. In fact, going forward, when we get better at these, when it states the level of confidence, we're gonna immediately state alpha because that'll be really important in the next section. But we haven't needed it until now, so I haven't introduced it until now. Now we need it. Alpha is 0 0.2. This is not 0 0.2. Alpha is 0 0.2. So step one, find alpha. Yeah, done. Well, that's a weird looking alpha. I guess it doesn't really matter. Done. Alpha equals one minus 0 0.8, which is equal to 0 0.2. And again, this 0 0.8 came from the fact that this is an 80% confidence interval. Step two, find 
alpha divided by 2. Right? In this subscript here, it's not an alpha. It's an alpha divided by 2. Well, what's alpha divided by 2? Alpha divided by 2 is alpha divided by 2. Alpha divided by 2 is alpha, which was 0 0.2, divided by 2. All it is is 0 0.1. Step one, find alpha, but you don't really need alpha, you need alpha divided by two, so cut it in half, you get 0 0.1. Step three, let's figure out this number, z with a little alpha divided by two in the subscript. Well, you already figured out that alpha divided by two is 0 0.1, so what you're looking for is a z with a little 0 0.1 in the subscript. How do you find z with a little 0 0.1 in the subscript? You have to know what this symbol means. Let me tell you what this symbol means. This is asking you for the z-score that is so far to the right that the area above that is only 0 0.1 or 10%. Right? This 10% right here is this 10% right here, which is the area above z with a little 0 0.1 in the subscript. I draw this picture, I find this value. If I can find this value, I'm done. You're like, whoa, 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 why'd you put zero in the middle? I thought 10 was supposed to be in the middle from this problem. No, the reason why is because this capital Z. When you see this capital Z right here, it means a Z score. To figure out a Z score, it's how many standard deviations above or below the mean you are. The short answer is just like you would use inverse norm to find this, if it was a regular value, an X value, if you need to find the Z value here, you just put in zero and one for your center and spread. Maybe you remember doing that in a homework problem at one point. Anytime you're looking for a z-score, all you gotta do is think, maybe I'll even write this, think center equals zero, spread equals one. That's Anytime you see a z, that's what you're doing. So to answer this question, I'm gonna use the inverse norm function on my calculator because anytime I'm told the area, and want to find the value as in inverse norm. Inverse norm always needs the area below the point. It's not 10%. 10% is the area above the point. It's 90%. So note that the number in the subscript here will never be what you put into the inverse norm function because the number in the subscript here is always the area to the right of the point you're looking for. But your calculator always wants the area to the left of the point you're looking for. So it's 0 0.9. And then because my center and spread are 0 and 1, I just type in 0 and 1. My calculator spits this out for me. Been a while since we've done inverse norm. You hit second and then variables. Select inverse norm. The area to the left of the point that I'm looking for is 0.9. The center and spread are 0 and 1 respectively. You hit enter. Spits out a number for you. 1.28155. Something like that. This is this. That's step three. 1.28155. So you're like, I'm done? That's my answer? No, but you're damn near done. You're in really good shape now because this is the number that you put in right there. And now all you got to do is divide, multiply, and square, and you're done. Right? Now you have all the pieces for your answer. So I would say that n is equal to this number, 1.28155. Sure, I'll write it out divided by my margin of error, which was this 0 0.2, times sigma, which was three, squared. Put that in your calculator, spits out an answer. That's the answer to this question. Let's do it. Um, not a great idea to round inputs that you put into another function. So rather than use the rounded version of this, I'm gonna take this entire answer and I'm gonna divide that by 0.2. So my answer divided by 0.2 and hit enter. And then I'm gonna take that answer and multiply it by three. If I just hit the multiplication key, it'll take my most recent answer and I'll multiply that by three. And then this isn't my answer. I need to square this entire thing. So I'm just gonna hit this X squared key. I'll take my most recent answer and it'll square it and it'll give me this number. 369.53, that's my answer. 369.53, if you put that into a quiz, or midterm or something, I'm really happy. Most people don't get this right. You get full credit for this. I'd be impressed. Maybe even give you a little extra credit. That's your final answer and you're done. Technically, this is asking you to determine N, the sample size. You can't have 369.53 trees. 
So we should say 370. You're like, oh, you just round this off? No, you round it up to the nearest whole number. So in this case, rounding it would have made it 370, just my normal rounding, but pretend this was 369.13. You'd think your answer should be 369, but it's not at 370. With these margin of error problems, you always round up to the nearest whole number. I don't really care that you do that. This is a correct answer. This is a correct answer. 369 would be a correct answer. I don't really care, but on the homework, they're picky. On the homework, make sure you round up to the nearest whole number if you want the system to mark it as correct. This technically would be the correct answer. We can do that same thing maybe much, much, much quicker for this example. Right? I need to know what n is equal to. Maybe this is more do it on your own and check your answers. I would give you the formula. It's n equals z sub alpha over 2. Well, alpha is 1%, so that means alpha divided by 2 is half of 1% or 0 0.005. So in my picture that I'm picturing in my head, the area to the right of the point I'm looking for is 0 0.005. So I want the area to the left of that. I'll go down to inverse norm. The area to the left is 0 0.995, 99 and a half percent, because one half percent is to the right. Center and spread, you leave them as zero and one because I'm looking for a Z score. This is Z sub alpha over two in this case. Note, this is bigger than my Z sub alpha over two last time because I have to go up and down by more of my spreads if I want to capture 99% of the area in the middle. At any rate, this is Z sub alpha over two. I want to divide that by the margin of error. So suppose in this problem it said, find n for a margin of error of, let's see, what was the margin of error in this problem? In this problem, the margin of error ended up being, I have my answer somewhere, here it is. It ended up being what, uh, 1.288. The distance from here to here is 1.288. That's my margin of error. Suppose somebody looked at that and they're like, nah, that margin of error is too big. I want your margin of error to only be 0 0.5. It's bigger than one now, I want it to be one half. Sure, no problem. I just take Z sub alpha over two, divide it by my margin of error, divide it by 0 0.5 that'll be given to you in the problem. Multiply that by sigma, which is given to you in the problem. Square your answer. Oops, don't hit second. Just hit the X squared key, this one right here. You hit enter, it gives you 663.48. If you tell me 663.48, I'm happy. I give you full credit on the test, but technically it's 664. You're like, you screwed up. This should round down to 663 because this is four or less. That's true, but in these problems, you always round up to the next whole number. So the answer to this question would have been 664.